Hey everyone, for this week's vlog, I'm doing something a little bit different. Apart from the fact that I don't have a babysitter, in case you can't tell, I'm also going to be sharing my recipes for uh, solves, balms, and lotions. I tend to make a new batch every couple weeks and a lot of people on social media have been asking for me to share. Now, if you only follow me for fishing content, don't freak out or unsubscribe. This is not going to be a regular occurrence, but I should also note this isn't a vanity post. Uh, of course, you can use this stuff for skincare. I mean, I do, but you can also use it for topical applications. I use it for medicinal purposes and for emergencies when out in the bush. So I did hum and haw about this. I thought uh, maybe this might not be something I would share, but you know what? There's more to me than just fishing, and this is a big part of it. So here we go. A lot of us spend a ton of time outdoors and we stumble upon trees, fruits, cactus, and plants that are edible and have medicinal uses. Where I live, I regularly encounter eucalyptus, mint, lemon myrtle, stinging nettle, prickly pear, rose hips, and so much more. I dry or preserve many of these, but sometimes I like to turn them into oils for marinades or topical applications. Before I get started, I do just have a couple of quick disclaimers. One is a food safety issue, and the other is just clarification. The oils I'm referring to here are infused oils, not essential oils, which are the pure distilled oil that undergo a different extraction process. Infused oils are exactly what their name suggests, a carrier oil like olive or coconut oil that has been infused with the herb or plant of choice. Secondly, while I post lots of edible infusion recipes on my social media channels, what you guys don't see is that we consume those oils within days of making them. I often make rosemary, oregano, thyme, and garlic infusions that I marinate or sous vide our venison and fish in. I'm gonna fly through the infusion part of this video, but it's important that I first mention that infusing garlic and certain herbs run the risk of botulism. I am not an expert on this, but from what I understand, you can lower the risk of this by drying your plant material first and using a pressure cooker. I've also read that you can store your oils in the fridge to extend shelf life. So that's my disclaimer. You can... Also use the sun process where you basically just put all of your matter, your plant matter and your oils into a jar and let them sit outside in the sun for 30, 60 days. But when I am in Australia or during my Australian time of the year, when I'm in a house, I do use the slow cooker method. It's luxurious, <laughs> it just is so much easier than doing everything over a fire and or by using the sun. Depending on how much plant material I have, I either use the slow cooker itself or I prepare individual jars and place them into the slow cooker with enough water to cover to just under the lid. I usually simmer them on high for six to eight hours before cooling them and straining them into sterilized jars. In this video, I'm gonna be using orange oil. I made some the other day by shaving off the outer part of the peel and infusing it in macadamia oil, which I'll be turning into lotion and balm for this video. I go through balms and lotions at a ridiculous rate, so making my own is cheaper and without excessive packaging or chemicals. Plus, as you'll see here, it's incredibly easy to do. You're going to need one cup of the infused oil, three tablespoons of beeswax, you need to have a quarter teaspoon of vitamin E oil. If you are using capsules, that means that you need to have two of them. And then finally, and probably most inconveniently, you need to have this benzoin oil. So this is a, uh, an extraction from the benzoin tree uh, sap. So you are only gonna need four drops of it, but you also do not need it for the lotion part of this video. So if it's the sort of, if it's the one thing that's holding you back and you're thinking, oh, well, that's a crazy, strange item that I don't have, don't worry, you don't need it for making lotion. And also, if you're going to be adding any essential oils to smell or offer any medicinal properties, this is going to be the time where you're gonna to wanna to pull them out of storage or off the shelf as well. If you have a double boiler, that's what will work best to do this part. I don't, so I'm just gonna be using a bowl, a stainless steel bowl, in a pot with water. You're gonna to wanna to avoid getting any water in the bowl. Just like when you make chocolate, you wanna keep the oil separate from the water. Add your measured out beeswax into your double boiler or whatever it is that you're using. For me, I just melt a little bit and then I measure it from there. Go ahead and put in your cup of infused oil. Use a stainless steel spoon to do your stirring. Add your quarter teaspoon of vitamin E oil or cut off the tops of two capsules and your four drops of the sap. 
and then pour it into a measuring cup, making sure not to let any of the droplets from the bottom of the bowl get into it. Here you're going to transfer it into your sterilized jars. Make sure you let it settle completely before putting your lids on, otherwise you run the risk of getting condensation in there. Now making lotion is very similar to making a balm, except we're going to change some of the ingredients. We're still gonna use one cup of the oil. I use two tablespoons of beeswax, but in this case you need 10 capsules of vitamin E and a quarter cup of distilled water. Again, no tree sap or benzoin oil necessary. The first few steps stay the same. We're going to melt our beeswax, add our oil, add our vitamin E and stir with a stainless steel spoon. Now you're gonna go ahead and pour the mixture into the blender. Again, taking care not to drop any water in it. And then blend on low. Unfortunately, I'm pretty limited with my blender at the moment, so I have to shut mine off and then I'm going to slowly add in the distilled water and get the blending happening again. But if you can do this with a regular blender, that's ideal. And again, pour into a dry sterilized container. Let it cool, and when that's done, put a lid on it. Try to refrain from putting your fingers in the cream. It's always best to use a wooden stick or something similar. And the lotion is a beautiful consistency. And that's it, enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. You're also going to need a quarter teaspoon of vitamin E oil, or if you're using capsules, you need two of them. I'm trying to speak over the baby that's behind me. And then you should also have this benzoin oil. It's literally not gonna happen, is it? Hey, come here, please. Hurry, because my battery keeps dying. You're so exhausting. So for this recipe, what you're going to need is one cup of the infused oil that we just made, three tablespoons of beeswax. It is so hard doing this video while there is a little person running all over the house. Um, you're also going to need a teaspoon of vitamin E oil, or if you're using capsules, I can see you in my peripheral with your fingers in the dog bowl. Out, please. What have you got now? Does that have glass in it? It looks breakable. Can mommy have it? Yeah. Right? All right, Mama. Yeah, I like your style. High five.